Well, hello, uh, that's me again. <clears throat> Today is the 20, uh, 29th of July, and <clears throat> people ask me uh, many times already, just talk about this or that piece of uh, equipment or piece of, uh, you know, hardware, if you wish, uh, which is used in modern wars, and uh, I thought that, hey, um, it's the end of the month and it's Friday. I might kind of elaborate a little bit on that issue, but let's start today with uh, this. Obviously, um, as you know, that Russia isolated uh, so much and that the United States doesn't have any recession or depression, as some people are already suggesting, for example, in uh, terms of Fox News. But if you look today at the uh, situation with the oil market, and if you look at uh, even the, this funny statement of breaking news from oil price that energy aspects reports, crude oil demand not declining in recession pattern, well, I have a news for you. Even in recession pattern, for example, I would like to eat three times a day at least. Well, two times if I want to drop some weight. And I will need to receive my 20 whatever, 100 or whatever calories because I need to live. I want to survive and I want not just to exist or anybody in the world. They do not want just to exist or subside. You know, they want to live normal life. And guess what? We have to really face the situation with that even depression or not, and depression is already here, not recession, depression. Uh, you will need oil. You will need oil for everything, from chemistry to uh, putting gas in your tank to, you know, what have you. I mean, it, you have to, to have oil. Most of the chemical uh, industry is based on oil, so it's uh, just the way it is. And that, of course, really spoils the uh, uh, mood, so to speak, for the combined West. But uh, we spoke about it and we talked about it for so long now and for so many times that at this stage it makes no difference, really, uh, to discuss it anymore because uh, basically everything has been said already. Uh, just in addition to all this, I wanted to make one note, however, for you guys. Uh, you, uh, uh, and you know, I respect uh, uh, Colonel Douglas McGregor uh, uh, tremendously, and though I do not agree with all of his conclusions, uh, I recognize him a great professional, combat officer, and really good military thinker. So I would suggest you before you go, uh, before we go, so to speak, discussing the, uh, some of those you know, military porn and military toys, I want you to keep in mind that, uh, and I will put the uh, uh, link below in my video to video of Colonel McGregor, we need to keep in mind that part of the issue with the, this depression now, economic disaster basically, you know, uh, is uh, the fact that uh, combined uh, West elites are just really, uh, they are not normal people in very many respects. They're not professional people. And the video of, uh, and in this particular case, it means nobody, n doesn't matter that much who you are gonna elect. I don't think so anybody can do anything and uh, change anything anything in terms of the uh, course which America took uh, about two decades ago and which brought it to basically a disaster. And the reason I uh, mentioned Colonel McGregor is because he speaks about the uh, process of the appointment by Mr. Trump of then uh, Defense Secretary Mr. General Mattis. And uh, you will hear in this snippet, so to speak, from uh, 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 Colonel McGregor, when, and he knows this absolutely from the inside, apart from the fact he knows personally President Trump, and uh, obviously he knows General Mattis, and uh, I'm not going to be talking about uh, general attitude, which is largely justified of Colonel McGregor towards uh, United States Marine Corps, but we can talk about doctrinal and fighting doctrines and uh, operations, whatever we want, uh, but the point is, when even uh, uh, Colonel McGregor admits that the only reason, the only reason Donald Trump 
Who always was an empty suit? The guy who te t tells you that boarding school was ever the boarding school as a teenager was everything he needed to know about military. That, that tells you something about the guy, and he was he's like bloating hot air balloon dude. But one of the reasons he uh, actually appointed Mattis was precisely because of Ma Mattis' image. Here you go. This is your general patterns. Um, uh, syndrome, if you wish. You need to talk big, you need to present yourself as a tough cookie, which Mattis did, you know, and of course we're not talking about Mattis' uh, uh, accomplishments, quote-unquote, militarily. I don't think so any uh, U.S. general in the last 20 years won anything. So, and, but this also characterizes, for example, not President Trump, who managed in his tenure, in his single term, to scrap everything in terms of foreign policy, including screwing up relations with Russia and then basically appointing the enemies around himself, left and right, despite the good advice. And when you have the Mattis, who actually couldn't stand Trump, and he probably recognized the same hot air balloon in him, or you talk about Mr. Bolton, or you talk about this bunch of neocons Trump brought uh, with his cabinet, and which really we're living with the consequences of that. So, you know what, uh, that's a really good indication, an indicator, going back to the table uh, I showed you in the beginning of this broadcast, and regarding the oil price and oil demand, uh, when you have people, and most of them are like that. When you have people who are really are good at PR only, they absolutely have no ability to recognize professional qualities of others. Well, there you go. But then again, don't trust me. I'm nobody in this respect. So, and listen to Colonel Douglas McGregor and what he says. And uh, especially in the first minute. So I, uh, as I already stated, I will put it, uh, uh, the link to his video below. below. Now to this military porn thing, all those military toys, those what have you, you know, the shiny, you know, military technology, which everybody loves to talk about. And uh, but here it is. Let's start with something which uh, uh, some people already asked me to do before. Uh, we will start with uh, this first. I would suggest you to go, before you go uh, into discussing uh, this issue or learning, let's put it this way, this issue, you can always um, refer yourself to this Air and Space Born Radar Systems, an introduction by Philippe Lacombe, Jean-Philippe Hardin, I believe I uh, pronounced him uh, uh, correctly, Jean-Claude Marchand and uh, Eric Norman. So it's a great, great uh, book on the fundamentals of the radar. But it's, uh, uh, you know, it's good, you know, for people who are not afraid of simple physical formulas, you know, and uh, there is little of uh, calculus, don't worry about it. But it gives, even if you browse, kind of, you know, run through it, you know, um, really fast, uh, it gives you some ideas and gives you some understanding of what is this all about. But, of course, we, uh, in this particular case, uh, we're going to be using um, definitions from this book, this is Radar Technology Encyclopedia, Electronic Edition. I think so, this book uh, has to be uh, owned by anybody, any serious military uh, uh, analyst who wants to uh, have any opinion on the issue of how things work, including the targeting and including, of course, what we're going to be talking about today, passive radar. Again, as you can see yourself, the Radar Technology Encyclopedia is written by David Barton, Sergei Leonov, who are editors, and uh, it's uh, issued by Artec uh, House, Boston, and London. So, and we're going to be talking today about uh, anti-radiation missiles and specifically about a uh, missile which is, you can see here, it's a few days ago, it's actually a week ago, it's uh, present, actually omnipresent on every single uh, Russian tactical uh, uh, aircraft, combat aircraft. In this particular case, this is the Russian pilot of Su-35 when speaking about the combat load of those R-73, R-77 <coughs> air-to-air missiles shows this wonderful thingy, which is called X-35. 
31 or H31, most likely it is a H31P version, and it is what we uh, know today, and uh, actually it is also known in the United States, and I'm not talking just about uh, United States' own version of the HARM, which is High Anti-Radiation Missile. Uh, United States, and especially United States Navy, they do know a lot about this X-31 thing, Russian thing, for a number of reasons. First, uh, 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 Russian X-31 beats uh, uh, American harm, hand, pants down, hands down, in capability, I mean, just absolutely. Because, obviously, if you look at the technical uh, capabilities of X-31 as anti-radiation missile, it is twice faster. And it is not high, anti, uh, high spin anti-radiation missile as the harm called. It flies on the uh, uh, basically uh, mid course or the high uh, altitude at about Mach 3.5, actually higher than that, it could go up to Mach 4. And in the sea skimmer mode, which is very low and me means up to the 5 meters, uh, rather down to the 5 meters over the surface, it's uh, two, Mach 2.7. The maximum uh, max speed of American harm is 1.8 Mach. So, as you can see yourself, it's almost twice uh, the, less than what X-31 does. And X-31 uh, in uh, uh, configuration, because there is other with the active uh, radar seeking, uh, 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 ra radar seeker, uh, X-31 is a classic anti-radiation missile, and what does it mean? That means this. Let's read uh, definition of the, uh, basically what is anti-radiation missiles, and uh, they based on the passive, pass passive radar. We're going to take a look at the uh, definition from this encyclopedia. And that's what it says. Passive radar is one that does not have a transmitter and that accomplishes detection and measurement of target coordinates based on their own emissions. Sources of radiation could be working radio transmitters of the targets and the targets themselves, which have thermal or other radiation contrasting with the surrounding medium. Uh, this is a very important phrase because everything actually in uh, targeting uh, is based on the contrast, be it radio or uh, uh, optical, uh, so what have you. So because of the absence of information on the uh, radiation time, the range to the radiation source can be determined from the data of no less than two receiving points. Well, it's traditional thing. Antennas and receive, uh, receivers of passive radars do not differ from antennas and receivers of active radars, which receive analog signal, pulse or continuous wave in the same wave band. So what does it mean? Any radar in the world actually... Um, in, well, pretty much anything, actually, uh, have the physical fields. Uh, they are surrounded, uh, well, uh, they emit physical fields. Uh, uh, if you look at the ship, for example, ships are just, you know, your classic uh, definition of the physical fields, which range from acoustic, obviously, thermal, and, of course, radio, apart from the visual. And radio is what? It's usually our radar and other systems, including communication systems, which emit signals in radio diapason, so to speak, in radio range. And what happens, unlike in uh, uh, classic uh, anti-shipping or any other missiles, which have to send signal, get the reflection back, and on that, uh, basically fix the position of the target. And they do it constantly, very fast, and many times a second. In a passive radar, in a passive radar seeker, as, as is, is installed on, for example, the same American HARM or Russian X-31 or H-31, uh, it's what it does, it scans the surrounding constantly. Well, there are all kinds of different scans there, which could be mechanical or b b both mechanical and electronic uh, in some special sectors or defined predetermined sectors, and they look for this emission. Once they get the emission within appropriately established and very classified, uh, very secret uh, um, uh, signal processing uh, protocols, the missile w will immediately know the, not only the range, 
well, how it's done, it's a separate issue here, but it will know the most important thing, which it needs in this case to sh uh, strike the target, the azimuth or the bearing. Because if you are, it's like, it's classic beacon principle, you know, lighthouse, you know, you see the lighthouse, guess what? You already know the, oh, well, if you have the measurement, the instrument for that, you already know direction to it. Not in general, but you can know direction to the very accurate degree, which allows you to shoot at it. So in targeting, when people ask uh, uh, somebody what targeting is, well, targeting data is very simply put is range and azimuth or range and bearing. So that's the targeting, one of the targeting ta types of the targeting. The second type of the targeting is, of course, uh, the uh, uh, geographical coordinates of the, or geographic coordinates, uh, depending on whatever projection you use, you can use Mercator map, projection map, that's what is, uh, everybody uses, for example, uh, especially in the sea, in the navies, uh, and you will know the coordinates of the, uh, any target you need to. You know, if you have special instruments, it could be obviously a radar or it could be the satellite imagery, which, for example, you can see here, I stole it from Scott Ritter's uh, 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 page on YouTube. As you can see yourself, this is uh, uh, satellite imagery uh, of the um, USS Ronald Reagan uh, task group maneuvering and being uh, followed by uh, two destroyers of the plan, uh, People Republic's uh, Army and Navy. Yeah, that's how it sounds. It's a really funny uh, title for, but basically Chinese Navy. And as you can see yourself, once you know the coordinates, you also will get the, uh, obviously, the targeting. So as you can see yourself, uh, targeting, uh, targeting, as I already stated, it's uh, either uh, azimuth and range or bearing and range and or, or uh, geographic coordinates. We're not talking about other parts which go into the targeting, but these are the parts which uh, uh, basically constitute what everything we need to develop firing solution for anything for ballistic missile, anti-shipping ballistic missile, for torpedo, for what have you, or for simple anti-shipping missile, including, of course, those X-31s or harms, which, upon detecting the uh, radiation or any kind of emission, will know the bearing or the azimuth to the target, roughly speaking. You don't need to know now all, as I already stated, basics of the uh, uh, signal processing protocols or mathematics which comes into it. Just know that if I hear something or see something, I will know the direction, approximately. Those missiles, they know not just approximately, it's a very accurate direction, and that's the, so to speak, direction they will be riding towards the target. In this particular case, those targets are uh, primarily are the antennas, radiating antennas of the radar station, which are located anywhere on the ground, let's say used by the air defense complexes, or on the uh, ships which use, of course, radar for everything, just to have the uh, basically idea what is going on around. So using passive radar. But when I stated that the United States Navy knows this uh, uh, X-30 or H-31 really well, I didn't mean to BS you. Uh, United States wanted X-31 at that time, it is version of it, to be used as the, as they called it, as a drone. Well, uh, let me show you something what is uh, as a drone, X-31, which was used, and you can see yourself. This, this is the article which tells you about that Navy needed targets to mimic supersonic anti-ship missiles, so they bought real ones from Russia. Well, uh, you can even see the um, if uh, when you go and look at this letter, for example, this was one of the uh, exchange between uh, Navy, uh, U.S. Navy, and some Russian subcontractors, which were developing the uh, and basically selling those missiles to the United States Navy. And uh, one of the reasons the United States Navy was desperate for it, and they wanted this XM31, is this. Look even at the Boeing's uh, comparison of, of the X-31, which is, as you can see yourself, is called here MA-31, as a drone, mind you, as a drone. As you can see yourself, 
you, you can see this yellow uh, uh, segment, the yellow field, which stands for MA-31. It beat, uh, beat any kind of drones easily. Look attentively actually how uh, high the speed of this missile was uh, when even uh, doing their basically uh, sea skimming roll. You can go below the 20 and go close to zero and you see yourself. It's Mach 2.7. Well, uh, and again, you have to remember that uh, United States tried to produce at, at some point of time the uh, um, uh, supersonic anti-shipping missile. Uh, it failed miserably. It was extremely expensive, didn't work, and so it was abandoned. The program was abandoned, and that is why the United States has only one anti-shipping missile, which is Mach.085, I believe, which is Harpoon. UGM-84 or AGM-RGM, depending on the type of the launch, and uh, uh, that's pretty much it. HARM itself, is, which is anti-radiation missile, as I already stated, it's merely Mach 1.8, and then drunk Boris Yeltsin, the president of Russia at that time, who allowed the sale of those X-31s, which were called MX-31, and then MA-31 after Boeing changed the uh, 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 heads there, which made them uh, heavier, but they still performed uh, absolutely outstandingly. He said, uh, in typical bravado and his uh, low class, you know, bragging, that, hey, let Americans have those missiles because they will see that if what kind of missiles our air defense deals with and shoots them down easily. Well, it was in some way true, but it was, of course, absolutely irresponsible. But at the same time, you have to understand, the United States were not just studying and using those MA-31s as drones, as uh, a, a supersonic anti-shipping missile type drone to train. No, obviously the United States wanted to get the hands on the propulsion and see what it can get, you know, in terms of the uh, developing supersonic uh, uh, anti-shipping missile. Obviously, as I already stated there, uh, this enterprise failed miserably and the United States doesn't have uh, supersonic anti-shipping missiles, but MA-31 uh, is worked, served for the U.S. Navy to train uh, the U.S. Navy air, air defense crews, especially their uh, ships uh, uh, equipped with the Aegis uh, uh, air defense system and basically so, and that was the story of uh, uh, H-31 or X-31, if you wish. But, of course, main thing for X-31 uh, is the fact that it can be both anti-shipping missile and it is passive. It can carry both active also, if need be. That's when it becomes a uh, fully anti-shipping missile, and that means it's not only blows the hell out of the ra radar antennas on the ships, thus making them completely blind. It also can strike you, strike you into the superstructure or in the hull, and that is really unpleasant thing when you have Mach 3.5 plus missile flying into your Hull, and that is not good feeling, believe me, especially for the ships of the size of the uh, frigate and about 5,000, 6,000 tons of displacement. Actually, it can sink them. So, but that's what is the issue of, of passive radar, and X-31 is one of those missiles. And as, if you look at, obviously, any kind of missiles Russia uses, primarily uh, 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 in terms of hitting targets such as ships, most of them, with the uh, exception of X or H-35, which is subsonic and it's called actually Garpunsky. Well, they're similar uh, in, in appearance with Garpun, but H-35 uh, uh, has an extremely uh, uh, developed and extremely reliable uh, electronic countermeasure suit. And that's the only subsonic missile which, uh, for example, Russian Navy uses. The rest of it is uh, Russian Navy uses uh, all kinds of uh, supersonic missiles. And if you look attentively at H-31, it is nothing more than a smaller version, much smaller version of famous P-270 which was known as a sunburn in Navy or in US Navy and uh, in NATO and it is Mach 2.7 anti-shipping missile also known as musket. 
it is much larger obviously than uh, Hot 31, but it is really fast and it ex can sustain an extreme G-forces and it is extremely difficult to shoot down. And many uh, Russian ships still use them, uh, that kind of missiles, they carry them as the, their main uh, weapon. The range of uh, uh, this P-270 was, uh, still is, around, well, it, people say depending on the uh, circumstances and depending on the type of tar targeting, uh, between 120, 80 and 270, 300 kilometers. It's by no means the uh, long-range missile, uh, but still, it's long enough to uh, 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 launch a very deadly salvo. And of course, modern Russian missiles, uh, starting from even H-35, let alone going to the updated P-700 Granite, and then of course P-800 uh, uh, Onyx, let alone Zir Zircon, they all have the ranges starting from 550 kilometers, and further with Zircon uh, being fully anti-shipping missile, uh, you know, getting it into the ex excess of uh, 1,500 kilometers. So, and... Um, but uh, Hot 31 in this particular case is very interesting missile because it shows you also the uh, very uh, advanced uh, uh, development of signal processing, extremely fast and still very, so to speak, modern. It is very useful. It is, and it's been used in Ukraine uh, to a great effect especially blowing out the radar post of most of the uh, um, Ukraine's uh, air defenses, be them uh, S-300 uh, or what have you, Buk M-1. And there is another thing about this missile, and neither harm nor uh, uh, X-31, their first generation uh, issues, which were uh, mid to uh, late 80s, they didn't have this um, uh, feature at that time. And the feature was that apart from all those e ECM, and by the way, uh, which was considered to be, you know, good defense, the other method of avoiding being hit by those missiles was to turn off the radar. Doesn't work anymore like this, any, uh, my friends. Uh, modern, starting from late 90s and all into thousands and today, be that harm or be that aha 31, they have these two very nasty features. First, they don't care about ECM, electric countermeasure, electronic countermeasure. You know why? Because get, uh, guess what electronic countermeasure is? You, you, you're damn right. It is radiation on itself. And uh, basically, when you have the radiation and interference, which is supposed to kill, for example, missiles with the active radar homing, you suddenly have actually even uh, um, improved uh, uh, situation for the anti-radiation missiles who now have the channels and signal processing suits which allow them to target the interference electronic countermeasure itself. So you basically actually using this, you can actually help the missile to guide it. Now, also with these missiles, using the classic radar ambushes, turn on uh, a radar for a few seconds, get the, you know, bearing and range, you know, plug it into your missile and shoot, and then turn it off immediately. Doesn't work like this anymore either, because both uh, newest harms and uh, half 31 they have the feature, they, uh, you, whatever you do, even if you turn off the, uh, um, your radar, uh, it already knows your position, so you can turn it on, turn it off, doesn't matter, it will strike you no matter what. So, and this is the kind of, the uh, trick, so to speak, with the passive radar, and all those uh, fairly, you know, uh, backwards, so to speak, fairly baseline, you know, processors, I don't know, and, and chips, which are what? Pentium 1 type thing, probably even less, but that's what gives you in terms of the signal processing, which allows you to do all those, you know, all using all those, you know, ISIC, you know, application specific integral uh, chips, which allows you to actually create some uh, amazing weapons, really. But as I already stated, and you saw it on the uh, diagram which I presented to you, uh, United States wanted the uh, uh, Hard 31 uh, because Obviously, it, it is much faster than uh, harm, 
and uh, it's uh, really maneuverable and even with the seekers which have been installed by Boeing which made this uh, missile heavier it still outperformed harm so and that's the story about those uh, uh, passive radar or missiles and uh, that's the story of all technology which uh, have been developing uh, or was developed uh, into those uh, amazing frankly weapon systems and of course nobody says they are hundred percent accurate hundred percent success successful but in terms of having that type of weaponry in your arsenal gives you a huge advantage especially against the systems of the air defense bo both on the surface of the sea or on the ground and that have been used extensively in the uh, in ukraine by russian air force so this is what i wanted to talk about to you guys and this is basically something for you to have you know fun uh in the weekend for the weekend and those who likes what i who like what i do please subscribe to my channel and those who can afford please support me on <coughs> patreon um in this particular case i want to express my profound gratitude to my sponsors thank you guys without you i will not be doing this and you know what have a nice weekend and i'll talk to you later guys bye bye